love him or hate him, but you surely have heard about Ichat in Tarkov. Rumored to be absolutely fearless, but fearless my ass. All you need to make him lose her head is a stick and this sound. And off they go! So today we talk about why you should be playing the Mosin. And as always we start with the modability of the weapon. And well, the Mosin is pretty limited. I mean, no surprise, it's basically just a stick. You can change the stock, barrels and so on, so you can change the weapon of course, but it will always look like a Mosin. Furthermore, modding a Mosin can be pretty expensive, kind of defeating the purpose of a budget sniper. But what exactly can you mod on a Mosin? First of all, you can remove the front sight. And if you feel really mean that day, you remove it and put it on the flea market. And somebody's gonna hate you for that. <laughs> Then you can also add a muzzle device, but other than a silencer, why would you do that? Because recall doesn't matter if you have a bolt action rifle. Then the magazine, there's just one, unless you change the stock. Then you can add a pistol grip, and this is a pretty good attachment, as it's cheap and adds a lot of ergonomics, so if you have access to it, definitely buy that. And same for the rubber pad. Then you can change the stock, but those can get pretty expensive. Then you can also change the barrel, which shouldn't be necessary, and you have the option to put on a rear sight. And if you're using the sniper variant, you can put on the famous PU scope. So you see a Mosin is built pretty simple and most modifications you don't have to worry about. Especially since a lot of attachments are very expensive. Which brings us neatly to the next point. The affordability of a Mosin. You can buy a Mosin right at the start of the game. This good old prop horse sells it at level 1 for 35,000 ruble. Which is not a lot for what you get. At proper level 2, you can then buy the sniper variant for 42,000. And again, basically the only difference between the sniper variant and the normal one is that with the sniper variant, you can mount a sight at the rear. And by the way, forget about the flea market because for some reason, the people think that I'm gonna pay more for a worse Mosin than what proper offers me. I don't know why. So, what do you have to say for yourself? Morph the judge? You also get a lot of Mosins back since, especially if you take the long variant, it fits in no regular backpack. So the person is forced to equip the weapon to take it with them. And since you get like 14,000 for a Mosin at Traders, most people just leave them at the ground. Then we get to the spicy topic and that's the round of the Mosin. And as with many other weapons in this series, it has an amazing one. You can see on the graph that all the rounds available have very good stats, especially penetration wise, but also in damage. I mean, every round has at least 70 damage and 40 penetration at least. But one is very special and that is the PS or 7N1, because that deals 86 damage. And 86 damage is a one shot to the Forex through a level 4 armor, but it has also a decent chance to penetrate a level 5 armor right away. So one shot potential and a really good armor penetration, that makes this round just insane. But therefore it's only available through proper level 3, basically level 26. But until then the LPS is still a very good round and you get it from proper level 1. Now of course you can always buy the PS round at the flea market, but especially at the beginning, this round is very expensive for obvious reasons. But again, the LPS is also a very very good round, with 81 damage and flies through level 4 armor, so this baby hurts a lot. And if you're left with like 4 HP on your forex, you don't think about pushing in that situation. But now to the exciting part, how does the weapon perform on close range? and surprisingly well. You just have to know that the weapon has certain limitations and how to deal with them. Because with a Mosin, you are going to learn how to hug cover. What you want to do is really hide behind cover, do a quick peek and immediately hide again. Because you don't want to be exposed for longer than necessary. Because well, your opponents are probably gonna play full auto weapons. But when you play the Mosin that aggressively, it has one very significant weak spot. Because a playstyle that aggressive requires very good aim. Because well, again, you have one peak, you have to keep the peak short and you have to land your shot during that short time frame. But if you can do that, then holy... 
that's gonna deal some damage. But you can also play it more defensively and just let the other guy push you. So you're holding the angle and if he pushes, you fire a shot and go behind cover. Rinse and repeat. And believe me when I say that, most people after getting hit by a Mosin become very very insecure and almost tame. <laughs> So yes, you can definitely play the Mosin at close quarters, but you have to know how. Just a small tip here, when you play the Mosin aggressively, ergonomics is king. And this can be boosted via the rubber pad and the pistol grip. Both are available at Jaeger level 2 after completing the Tarkov shooter 3 and 4. But okay, let's now have a look on what the Mosin was designed for. That sniping. And well, it was designed to do that, so it doesn't come as a surprise that it does it well. The accuracy is great, the muzzle velocity is insanely high, almost a thousand meters per second, but of course there's a but. <laughs> if you want to use a silencer on a Mosin, then say goodbye to any ergonomics. <laughs> so aiming down sight becomes very slow, and you also lose a lot of stamina very fast when aiming down sight. In this case, you are kind of forced to replace the stock, but this can be very expensive and kind of defeats the point of a budget sniper here. So just keep that in mind if you want to snipe silently, because then you have to take your time. Then also a lot of people really dislike the traditional Mosin scope. And I have to say, yeah, it takes a lot of getting used to. But with the sniper variant of the Mosin, you can place any scope you want on the rear side. And it looks hella stylish, <laughs> kind of. And who the hell claims that you can't do shooterborne in heaven with a Mosin? I mean, it might be a bit more difficult with, for example, a TX-15, but it feels so much better with a Mosin. So in summary, the Mosin is an amazing rifle. It's one of my absolute favorites. It's basically the big brother of the Tots. You can use it for pretty much anything, you get it back a lot and it can be deadly as hell. And if one of those meta chats realizes that he just got killed by a loud big stick, that puts a smile on my face. Also the weapon is available at the very early state of the game and if you start early, you will level up your sniper skill, which you then have ready for the later missions that require you to have a certain sniper skill. But the Mosin also allows you to grind that sniper skill pretty fast. All you need to do is basically just take 40 rounds with you and just keep reloading. That's it. And with that method you get 3 to 4 sniper points per raid. So the Mosin is just here to give. <laughs> and to start out with a Mosin and upgrade to a hex grid mid raid is just best feeling ever. <laughs> but yeah, let me know what you think about the allowed stick in the comment section down below. As always don't forget to thumbs up the video. If you have questions, put them in the comment section as well, or join our Discord, there are a lot of helpful people there. And then subscribe for more, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye bye!